Hello, my name is Richard Hendy and I'm the coordinator of culinary programs at St. Lawrence College in Kingston, Ontario. Hi, uh, today we're going to show you how to make uh, Yorkshire puddings. These are some of the trickiest things to make for some people um, and I'm going to make it uh, today so you can see how easy they are to make. Uh, there's only a few ingredients in it and the easy part is just mix it all together. Uh, the hardest part is to cook them, uh, having the right temperature, not opening up the ovens so they all go flat like uh, little pancakes. So today this is going to be nice and easy. Uh, just follow the directions on the recipe and we should be all right. Uh, Yorkshire puddings are one of the ones which is a staple in the UK where I'm from and we've made, well I've made thousands of them over the years uh, for Sunday lunches. Uh, in most of the pubs and restaurants and hotels that I've worked, but never on this scale. The scale of three eggs uh, is very small for us, so uh, normally we're using maybe 30 eggs, uh, you know, a couple of pounds of flour, uh, a couple of pints of milk, a liter of milk, so you can see this is a nice easy size for you at home. Uh, this makes about 12 Yorkshire puddings. Uh, obviously you'll probably eat all of those in the first sitting with uh, the people which you're going to be eating them with but if you want to double this batch you can double it, just have two muffin tins, it'll make you 24 uh, and you can freeze them as well. So the nice thing about these when you freeze them if you take them out uh, for the next meal or a couple of days later all you have to do is put them back into an oven frozen uh, at 350 and then just warm them through and what happens they'll crisp them right back up and then you can just put them on the plate uh, for your dinner and it'll just seem like you've just got them right out of the oven and made them fresh that day so it's really helpful. So first of all we've got a couple of steps here so we're gonna use first of all we've got the, the flour uh, we've got flour and salt and pepper which I've already ground down so we're just gonna put those two together half a teaspoon of salt half a teaspoon of pepper with the 115 grams of all-purpose flour. So it seems a very small amount of flour, but honestly, this does work. Then we're going to take the, the, the next step. We've got uh, three eggs. So I'm going to put the three eggs in there. One, two, three. Get that down. 290 milliliters of milk. Sometimes in the trade, we, we change this to milk and cream just to get a bit more uh, fattiness into it and a better caramelization in the oven. Uh, then we've got our mustard. So we're going to put in about a tablespoon of mustard. So just give that a shake. This is Dijon mustard. Uh, you can use various other mustards as well. So I'm just going to give that a shake in there. With these mustards, there are lots of different flavored mustards you can get, and that's completely fine as well. This is all just for different flavors for you. So you can experiment whatever you like with this, as long as it's not too sugary, because then they're gonna burn when they're in the oven. So you don't wanna to put too many like brown sugars and things like that in there. But you could spice it up a, get a bit. You could put some sriracha in there, some hot sauces, uh, different flavored mustards, uh, hotter horseradishes, whatever you like. It's really up to you of how you want to, to take that. So with this one, this one's a, uh, one that my parents or my sister bring over. This is one from Waitrose, uh, which is a, a store in the UK. So we're just gonna put some of that in. I like this one a lot. It's nice and sharp and, and it's uh, got a good heat to it, uh, but it's nice and flavorful as well. So all we're gonna do is mix the eggs and the uh, milk, the mustard and the horseradish together. Now using a nice balloon whisk is a good idea just to get the air into the eggs, get them aerated and mixed really well. Now the main problem is about Yorkshire puddings deflating is not having enough eggs in them. The eggs is our, our uh, leavener so it's going to make everything rise in the oven so this is the key. Having one egg you may not get good pancakes, uh, well they'll come out like pancakes, they won't be coming out like Yorkshire puddings so you need at least two or three eggs at least for this. Batch. So giving them a good mix together, you can see we've got lots of air bubbles in there and that's what you want. You want to get lots of air into the eggs because these are going to help us rise. Now the idea is now is to get the, the flour uh, and the egg mixture together. So we've got dry ingredients and wet ingredients. If ever you've had this before, 
you're, you're always worried about getting lumps. Using a whisk very, very quickly is the best idea, or even just getting an electric whisk um, and really giving it a good old mix straight away will get rid of those lumps. But if you do have some lumps, it's not terribly, it's not going to fail. Right? We, we want to get as much of the flour mixed in as we can. We don't want to have big lumps of it because that's where we get our structure of our Yorkshire puddings. Just like bread, right? The, the structure of the bread comes from the flour, from the protein from the flour. So this way, we've got to make sure that we get the, that flour mixed in com completely. If there are tiny little lumps, uh, just leave them. Don't strain them away because that's where our thickening power are. are um, our structure of our Yorkshire puddings is going to be because if we strain those out and throw them they're going to sink okay so what I like to do I like to put the flour into the wet mixture because if you do it the other way around it's very difficult to get the flour from the bottom of the bowl mixed with the eggs because you haven't mixed it properly and then you come across big clumps of flour at the bottom of your bowl so what I like to do is throw it in and whisk it as quickly as I can just to get it incorporated very very quickly Okay, so we've got our flour, our salt and our pepper mixed in with our eggs, our milk, our mustard and our horseradish. Okay, so just put that in and give it a good old mix around. Try not to get it all over your island. Using a big bowl is always good. Oh, there goes some. Okay. And that's it. Because we've whisked the eggs up before, we don't need to give it a lot of whisking now, just to get some air incorporated. But now you've got a, a nice thin batter. Now with this, the idea is to give it a rest. So we want to let this sit here for about 10 minutes before we start cooking it. Obviously you can make this a little bit longer, you can make it for 30 minutes, let it sit, that's completely fine. Uh, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter at all. Just don't put it in the fridge, just keep it at room temperature on the side of your, your countertop uh, and then just let it do its thing, let it nice and relax. And then what we'll do when we come back, we're going to put the oil into the muffin tins. Uh, I'll show you how much we need for that. Then we'll heat up uh, those muffin tins and make sure they're nice and hot for when we're doing it. So while our batter is relaxing and taking it easy over there for 10 minutes, we're going to heat up our Yorkshire pudding tin. So we have a muffin tin here. What I like to do is always have another tray underneath um, because if anything does happen that you spill this oil or something like that, at least it will spill into the tray and not into the bottom of your oven and cause a fire. So be very, very careful. This is the, the, the most dangerous part of this. So what we're going to do, we're going to fill up each one of the muffin tins for the Yorkshire pudding. And I've got uh, the oil here. And what you want to do is about, it's about a tablespoon and a half. So about 20 milliliters into each one of the actual muffin tins. So I'm going to, you can put into this in a squeeze bottle uh, and put it in, or you can just free, you know, freehand it like this. You're really not going to make too much of a difference uh, of how much, uh, if you put too much oil or too less but don't don't worry don't just don't fill it up halfway right we're gonna have deep fried Yorkshire puddings um, so with this we've got the oven on at 450 right now so we can just fire these straight in and they need about 10 minutes to warm up in a 450 degree oven so with that you've got to be very careful when you're taking these out make sure you have a cloth which is dry or even two cloths or your uh, cooking mitts right because this will be very very tricky and when you're taking it out of the oven you want to take them out hot and place them on the stove top don't bring them over to your island don't walk around with it because it is very dangerous and then all we're going to do is pour in the Yorkshire pudding mix to the hot oil and then we fire them right back into the oven okay so I'll put this in the oven for 10 minutes and I'll see you in a moment Hi, so welcome back. Um, so we've got the uh, oil in the oven in the muffin tins, so they're just coming to the, the last 30 seconds of warming up. It's a wonderful idea to put on a timer when you put these muffin tins into the oven with the oil. If you get distracted at all and this oil, it could, you know, catch fire. So very important that you use a, uh, a timer of some sort on your phone or on your Alexa or your, your 
Google Nest or whatever you want to use, but put a timer on for 10 minutes so you don't forget it, so you don't get distracted. It's really helpful because you don't want to have that happening. Okay, so here we go. We'll turn off the timer. Two clocks, and what I'm going to do just for the course of this video is put it on my wire rack here so you can see how I'm doing it. Keeping it safe as well, right? We're going to put in our batter, as you can see here. So you can see I'm just going to give it a little mix around, and you can see it, it seems quite watery, right? Um, but honestly, this will work. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this in, in a measuring jug, because this will make our life a lot easier for when we're pouring it into the hot oil. You don't want it to splash you. That's the key. Here we go. So we're up and that up. This gave us the time to um, dry out my sieve in the oven after we did the dishes for those 10 minutes. So here we go. So be very, very careful. So the oil is very hot. Close up the oven. Now all we're going to do is pour in the right amount of, so about halfway up. So you'll hear it sizzle straight away. And that's what we want because that's giving the structure for the Yorkshire puddings when that it's cooking on contact. There we go. So about halfway up. And then we can always go back and add a little bit more if you need to. So the key is having the oil hot enough and being quick enough. And then just have a look around if there's any ones which have a little bit less in them, you can fill them up. There we go. Perfect. So now you can hear the, the, the sizzling has gone down. So we want to be very quick here. Open up the oven. Get the tray nice and safely. Put them on the top shelf. And close the door. Okay. And that's exactly it. So this is the, the key, being nice and safe, putting those into the oven. And what we're going to do, we're going to watch them rise. I'm just going to set up a, a camera there and see so we can watch them rise up. And then we'll turn them around, uh, give them another little bit longer following that recipe. Turn them around once more and then they should be done. It takes about half an hour, which you think is a long time. But you'll get the good structure, the good height of the Yorkshire puddings this way. Okay, see you in a few moments. Hi, so now we've just hit the 13 minute mark and I'm going to rotate the Yorkshire puddings very quickly and I just want you to see how quickly you have to do this without hurting yourself. So, I'm just going to open up the oven, pull the shelf, turn it and close the oven as quickly as I can. Okay. If you're able to see this. So you can see how they've risen already, just a quick turn and close her up very, very quickly. Time them back on, and then we'll give them another shout, and we'll give them a, a turnaround in the next few minutes. Thank you. Hi, so that's been five minutes now, and the time is just about to come to an end. So that's uh, been 18 minutes in total so far. And then what we're going to do, we're going to give it another flip and turn the oven down to 425, and we'll give it another five minutes. So we'll just do that now. So the timer will be off. We'll change it to. 425 and now we'll do the flipperama again very quickly remember else they'll deflate there we go and then we'll put the timer on for another five and then they're looking good they're rising which is a bonus they're not pancakes so which is great hi so I've just taken them out of the oven. That's been 13 minutes plus five and plus five. So that's 23 minutes all up uh, to take these out. And as you can see, they just come out beautifully. So some of them have a little less oil in the bottom and some have, have none. So they've uh, soaked it up, but you can see how crispy the bottoms get. Absolutely beautiful. And they're holding their shape as well. So you can make these uh, ahead of time, like even in the morning before your guests arrive at, uh, for, for lunch and have them all ready and then just have them all on a tray sitting ready and then fire them in the oven just to re-crispen them up just before people arrive. So it makes your life easier instead of having everything all coming together for your, your lunch time or your dinner time, pre-make them. They're perfectly fine just like this and then cracking them in a 
like a 350 oven uh, and just to re-crispen them up and warm them up. So I hope you enjoy these. Um, I've enjoyed quite a few of these over the years, especially in our trade. Um, this is our Sunday lunch special. What we usually do when we're in the kitchen is cut it open, put some roast beef in there, some horseradish, a little bit of gravy, and then just have a roast beef Yorkshire pudding sandwich, which is, helps us get through the busy times in the kitchen, that's for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed those. Look, they work. So I hope they do for you. And uh, tell me and send me some pictures of them if you uh, have any. Okay, thanks again.